Rally legend number two in the Great British Car Share is the Triumph TR7. Now we're talking! Tony Pond in a Triumph <laughs> TR7 on the Lombard RAC rally sends shivers down my spine. But America got this before us. 1975, we sent it over the pond and they loved it so much that the UK launch was delayed. So we had to wait. What a wait it was and it was worth waiting for years. While the road car had a hundred and five horsepower, four cylinder engine, the rally car had the Rover V8 and it was tuned. It was a Group 4 homologation <laughs> special. It had 300 horsepower with a bonnet as long as that, with a big ball john and with a big fat wide end with big wide arches. Yeah. This for me, I look at a TR7 and I just think, rally car. And that's why I picked it. Huh. Do you think that? Um, <laughs> I look at a TR7 and I just think wedge. It's it's just it's just the ultimate wedge, isn't it? The ultimate wedge. The yes. ultimate British Island wedge. You know, Paris man, yeah. just. And they also designed the princess, of course. Obviously, had a thing for cheese. Yeah. Because, yeah. Princess also, and for me, it's the ultimate wedge. Love it. Love, love, love it. So this should have been a very good rally car, should it? It's not the right shape. Exactly. It didn't have the right engine to start with. They had to really get quite creative. John Davenport, yeah, who yeah. ran the yeah. competitions department, really had to think quite creatively. But he did, and we're very glad he did, because yeah. this became a rally legend. And I'm gonna show you why. Ooh, no. First thing you notice about a TR7 is the seat you belts are in it. a different county. <laughs> so, you can't have really long arms. We've done well though, it. we're in our second car of the day and so far neither of us has had seat belt trouble. Issues. Or breakdowns. I think you'll find usually it's you that has seat belt. Why are you actually fetching me into that? I think you had issues, Fanny. <laughs> there we go. You're going to have to watch the. Uh, <laughs> you have to watch the Triumph Stag from the Series 2 in I order to get the context you, there. I love it when you talk dirty to me. I love it when you call me funny. So the TR7 the then TR7. is one of my ultimate rally cars. Well I've been lucky enough to drive this car before. Yep. So on the Drive Dance Car Open Day, yep. um, this was one of the cars that I chose to drive then, obviously, because I am a huge, huge fan of the TR7s. Yeah. Yeah. Love them. It's really responsive, even though it's the four cylinder engine. I mean, it was what became the Triumph um, Dolomite Sprint engine, and that's what the first rally cars had. It's just really responsive and it feels like a sports car, doesn't it? Yeah. And Electric, I've heard lots of people. Small steering wheel. Yeah. It's the driving position. Yeah. The fact that you load down. You climb into it, down into, into it. Into it. Um, I've, I've, I've heard a lot of people call these cars and say they're not sports cars, they weren't designed as sports cars, they don't drive like sports cars. But do you know what? I think they are. I mean, we're not driving it on the limit, are we? They but don't know what they're talking about. It was a true British icon, this. And all the best British icons became big in America, and that's the test. The, yes. the Mini did. Yeah. And they this did. loved it over there, yep. didn't they? Loved it. Well, as I mentioned, we had our launch delayed because the Americans loved it so much they couldn't get enough out to yeah. produce them in this country. So... Crikey. Yeah. That's not sounding... That's just not sounding good. Do you need me to pop back and get that gear that you left on the floor? I or? think it's... Is that... Yeah. It's what a is it box your gearbox? Well. It's a gearbox. Is it? No. I'm going to try again. So I feel like we should have had... I obviously can't talk and change gear at the same time. We should have had our moustaches back on for this because Tony Pond <laughs> was the man in a TR7 VA. Really? And uh, yeah, yeah. he made them famous. Yes. And I just think of the red, blue and white British Airways liveried TR7 V8s that became the TR8s. And they became the homologation yes. group four specials with Tony Pond with his 80s moustache and his coal length hair. He was just he such was a cool, cool guy, wasn't such he? a legend as well. And so, just he just he wasn't like a Billy Bighead, was he? He wasn't like, like a me, me, 
it was just didn't come across so that way, did he? Yeah. Such a lovely Proper old guy. school gent. So this car, when it first came out in rallying, in its, with its V8 engine, with Tony Bond at the wheel and uh, Per Eklund, um, it didn't do very well. It retired, had engine issues from that uh, modified Rover V8 on the first two rallies it did. So it became a bit of a joke in the service area. And then, rally number three, Manx rally, third overall. And all of a sudden, people started to take notice. Third overall? Yeah, on the Manx. Wow. And that was a big rally to be third overall on. You know, in those days, you know, you were battling the Escorts, you were battling the Chevettes. Yeah. Um, and we were getting towards the Group B era, you know, the manufacturers were chucking everything at these Group 4 cars um, and maxing out the regulations. Best bit though. Although it came third on its first Manx rally, it won the Manx rally the year after. Did it? Yeah, bit of development under its wow. belt, bit of reliability for John Davenport's competitions team. Yeah. Um, and there we were. But like you say, you wouldn't initially look at this car and go, that's going to make a great rally car. No. It just kind of goes against yeah. what your brain thinks would be normal as a rally car. So one of my favourite people in rallying, Mike Broad, who's the president of the BTRDA, anything in rallying he's still involved with, but he was a, a top level co-driver um, for people like Tony Pond, uh, Russell Brooks, Timo Lampinen, and, and people like that back in the day. And he, he, he co-drove in these cars, and he tells me these cars were just epic rides. They yeah. were just, it was just a wild ride from start to finish. And he told me a great story about the 1978 RAC. He was due to be in a um, Sunbeam with Robin Air Mounsel, who we've spoke about when we were driving the Avenger earlier okay. in the series. Um, Robin lost his drive in the Sunbeam that year for the RAC, so Mike Broad was out of a drive. So he went to John Davenport with the Triumphs and said, do you have any drivers that need a co-driver for the RAC? Because yeah. I, I need to do that for my career. You know, it, was, it was a career in those days. Of these guys were paid big money yeah, for these yeah. events. Yeah. And he was without a drive. He'd lost his driver. So John Davenport said, we've got a new Finnish driver called Timo Lampinen. He's going to be in a, in a TR8. So if you want to be in with him, that'd be great. Um, so he went over, this was like a week before the event, and did all the service plans, because the co-drivers did everything in those days. Service plans, all the schedules, the maintenance stops, all the halts along the way, which yeah. labels they were going to use were still country lanes they were going to use and it was all clouded in mystery of which team would be servicing where because if you got your route right then the rest of the day went smoothly and mm. Mike was an expert at this then he got a call two days before from Des O'Dell at the Chrysler well, Roots competition department uh, you're still under contract you might not have a driver but we've seen that you've signed for Triumph and you're co-driving for Timo in the no. TRA yeah 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 and so he said right we'll let you do it but you've got to come back and you've got to come back to Coventry and do the yeah, yeah. service schedule for us. Yeah. So Mike went back, basically copied what he'd done. And there was a big mystery that year as to why the Sunbeams and the TR8s were servicing exactly the same remote uh, locations right through the RAC rally. So I busted that mystery. If you've ever wondered that, if you were out on that rally and you wondered why they were all there, which was a bit unusual, and that was why. I'm sure Mike Broad wouldn't mind me telling you that story. I was going to say, is that insider knowledge that you shouldn't have like gleamed onto the world? He knows I like that story. <laughs> But these these came from an era when it was all about big stories, and these were headline grabbing rally cars. And I can't look, even though it's got a cloth roof on this one. Yeah. I can't look at a TR7 yeah. without hearing a V8 yeah. engine soundtrack and without seeing kind of mist and and steam coming off the rear brakes, going through a water splash in Western Park on the RAC. I, it's just a. It's on one again, guys. So, I'm sorry. Yeah, I love the enthusiasm and the. He's just got like little starry eyes. When you you see the rally it. drivers back in the late seventies driving these, Tony Pond, Per Eklund, um, and they they're just having to wrestle them. Yeah, yeah. Just like they, they oh, come, yeah. their elbows are up against the yeah. windows and these because they've got three hundred horsepower. These I've fat rear tires. Some footage recently, obviously, with the build up to knowing that we're going to yeah. do this and. It's astounding, isn't it? Yeah. It's astounding. They're wrestling these and things through the rally stage. What I really loved was uh, Tony Pond's co-driver set was being interviewed and said, "It's almost as if 
He said something like, it's like he's got a sixth sense. It's like he just knows. When it's going to switch ends. Yeah, yeah. But it's like he's got a sixth sense. He's in tune with that car. And he, he said, you know, no one had ever driven like Tony Pondo because he was just so good. Yeah. And I just, yeah, you watch the footage and they are there absolutely battling with it. Yeah. Elbows out on yeah. these cars rested because they were so yeah. short and stubby as yeah. well and the wedge shape didn't help um, the um, famously they were supposed to build 400 homologation specials of the TRA so that they could drive the group B4 the group 4 car sorry in competition they had and to make 400 400 road I know cars some of them they had to do 200 didn't they in group B days in group B yeah but the group 4 regulations 400 homologation specials yeah. and John Davenport is is um, famed for saying in an interview after the days um, well actually the FIA never looked that closely so we only made 150 no yeah yeah so that's why there's only there was there were less uh, TR8 road cars yeah. than there should have been for the yeah, we all wish there'd have been more because not only is this a rally legend it is a fantastic classic car as well yeah. my turn and you make PA you, noises. It, it is going to be hard because I, I do love this car and I do want to just keep on driving it. I love everything about it. I love the dashboard. I love the cloth seats with the matching door cards. The tartan interior. It's just beautiful. Um, everything about this car. I I'm, want one. I'm going to deliver your seatbelt back to Yorkshire. There we okay, go. Watch now. it go, watch it go. Wow, all the way back there. <laughs> And I'm going to drive this, and um, I've I've come dressed like I think Tony Pond would have come dressed to drive the recce car. I did wonder, did he get that from a charity shop? That top? No, it came from the 70s. It did come from the 70s, no, it didn't. didn't it? The, the colour definitely. No, did. it looks like it did. Yeah. If yeah. I drive my Clan Crusader in this, I look like a floating head. <laughs> <laughs> the colour is definitely. It's almost the colour of your suntan, Sarah. I was thinking more like contents of a baby's nappy but trouble was brewing at newly renamed british leyland when the triumph dr7 was launched to an eager british motoring public in 1976. in many ways a sports car was the last thing the struggling company needed but just look at it is it any wonder we loved it from the start harris man wedge styling tartan seats unapologetic sharp design cues it must have looked like a spaceship in the mid 70s. The car was an instant hit, no doubt helped by the simultaneous launch of BL's rally programme. Right, Paul? Right, Crabbers. That and the small matter of the V8 engines that appeared in the rally cars aptly renamed the TR7 V8s. John Davenport's intentions were clear. In upping the TR7 road car's power output, 105 to 300 brake horsepower and signing some of Rallying's big guns to lead the charge. The car's wide stance, stubby profile and long bonnet didn't lend itself to gravel special stages, but the car would come into its own on tarmac, with Tony Pond winning the Manx Rally, among other headline-grabbing achievements. Another iconic British rally legend was born, and the road cars, well, they walk a little bit taller as a result, and they still do today in the hands of drivers like Chris Ingram. You didn't deliver your seatbelt all the way back to Yorkshire for me. Oh no. Every time. It's because you, it's user error. It's not, it's triumphs. It's user error, let go. There you are, why are you pulling it up like that? There you are. Should we do a little a little lesson in how to put the seatbelt on? It's not the angle though. It's the angle. Look, I'm doing it up, I'm doing it down. I'm doing a hokey cokey up, look, down. I'll do it down. Because you're doing it too quickly. Story of my life. Am I doing a good job so far, Crabbers, of convincing you that these cars we're driving in this series are rally legends? 100%, you're doing a really good job. I think I think you've already convinced me, I get it. I get it, and I get your enthusiasm. So, Avenger or TR7? TR7! It'll take some beating, Every right? day of the week. It'll take some beating. If yeah. we were driving the actual rally cars, then 
you'd be looking forward to the Metro, trust me. Metro 6R4 is one of the yeah. most incredible rally cars in the world. It's like strapping a V6 engine to your back. They are. They are, but I'm, that's not what I'm all about, is it? You know, strapping it, V6 engines to your back. <laughs> it's great no, fun. Not that bit. I know you say, well, they're the most you know, successful in the world. No, they weren't. They weren't successful. No. Fastest. Fastest, yeah. yeah fastest. But what I'm saying is that's not what I'm all about. It, for me, it's... It, you're thinking it's this as the, well, aren't you? You're thinking romance. earlier on, it's, in the beginning of this it, series, Sarah said, you promised me rally cars. I wanted speed. speed. And now and two I, cars in, she's yeah, saying, I'm not all about speed. That, but I still think even if I was offered a TR7 rally car and a 6R4, I'm picking... It's not an easy decision, I've, I've got to say, but but you did say you were all about speed. I, I promised about, you rally cars. I am all about speed, but there's got to be a few fa other factors in there for me, unfortunately. It's not just the speed. I've got to have some kind of love affair with that car. And for me, the wedge, the wedge. The wedge. Okay. The metro. I love a metro. I have a metro. I drive a metro. But the TR7 has got my heart. We are not the first people to make a TR7 famous on film. In fact, we're nowhere near the first. But <laughs> it starred in the Avengers, didn't it? Did you watch the Avengers? The Avengers. Mm -hmm. There was a TR7 in the Avengers. I'm far too young to know the Avengers. So am I. <laughs> I read Wikipedia. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it was a film star because it was so unique. And there weren't many British sports oh, cars in that. this era, were there? Because everyone was making more sensible cars. Yes. The 60s were big for British sports cars. Yes. Um, the 70s, not so much so, um, but this, for me, the, the TR7 booked that trend. The British sports car went international. The Great British Car Journey has two TR7s. It's got this one, and this has got a double bulge bonnet, which I yeah. think was the V8 bonnet, actually. The V8, yeah. um, but it's not a V8, but that's okay. It does go really well, actually. Um, but they've got a hard top as well yeah. that's in the actual attraction. Yeah. And as a pair, that's fun. And which one would you like? Which one do you prefer over the, the Roadster or the Tin Top? I don't know. What I... are we here to do? So Why did I pick the TR7? You're having the Tin Top. I'm having the Tin Top. And it's red. Tintop. So I've got less work to do when I'm putting that glorious um, John Davenport British Airways <laughs> yeah. livery on it with the blue yeah. chevron on the bonnet and yeah. the white stripes and blue stripes down the side. So big good. fat mini lights yeah. stuck under those big so white good arches. Looking. So good looking. Oh. It's iconic, isn't it? I can imagine rallying one of these. Doing a stately home, like the historic honest, rally festival. To be honest, Paul, I reckon you could imagine rallying any. I think <laughs> rallying is in your blood, in your brain, 24 hours, seven. And it is in the molecular makeup of all of these cars that I've picked yes, for you this weekend. Yeah. But I reckon, I did say, you know, there's a peel in there. I reckon you could, that peel be <laughs> the little 50. Where would I put my co-driver? I reckon you try and rally that. You are just literally obsessed. Yeah. But I love it. I love your love for it. I do appreciate these cars as classic cars as well, but I would pick and any of these cars to. because you've of the Mirai cars. Taking it back, breaking it down, taking it back to the base, you've got to admire it as a classic car before you can admire it as a rally car. Surely. If somebody comes up to me at a car show and says, tell me about your clan crusader, yeah. I'm like, well, 
In 1972, it won the Tour of Mull with Alan Connolly and Crawford Dunn. And in the same year, just before that, it came second on the Manx Rally be behind Roger Clark's Escort. That's no one what, knew what a Clan Crusader was. But that's and they're not all like, what they're asking no, you. No, and they're like, yeah. what engines have got, mate? Yeah, because a lot of people look at a Clan, they go, uh, don't know what that is. Yeah. They're not, they, do, they don't understand the connection with the engine. But that's why I drive a Clan Crusader. Yes. It yeah. almost doesn't matter what it's got in the back. Yeah. It won the Tour of Mull in 72. It won the Mod Sport series, the yeah. GT series in 73. It took Lotus on on the racetrack on its own turf. That's not the only reason you drive a Clan Crusader. The other reason you drive a Clan Crusader is because it matches got my shirt. Jumper. I knew you were going to say this. <laughs> I think you had the jumper first and you scoured the internet. For a matching clan. Yeah. You heard it first. It's the truth. It's a scoop. The pop up headlamps on the TR7 are just so unceremonious. They're just massive and they're, they're too yeah. heavy and they're too big, yeah. but they come up and they're just so cool. Look at that. Oh. Look at that view. That is just lush. That's mega, isn't it? That's just. That's done it for me. You know, people say that British classic cars are very unreliable, electrics are rubbish, and everything else. Everything on this car works really well. There's, you know, there's nothing that drops off it. There's nothing that doesn't work. It's running smooth. It doesn't overheat when you're sat here talking. And, and I expected to press that and for one light to go slightly. <laughs> yeah. Doop, doop, doop. Like that. But, but a lot of cars yeah. do. They go one at a time, don't yeah. they? Yeah. But no. Like, Perfect. Perfection. Even a Porsche 928, the lights don't go up that well. British engineering, Listen that to is. The sound. Uh, uh, uh. We'll That's the sound it's making. It's not even smooth, is it really? Sarah Crabtree, <laughs> in a new series, will be doing impressions of British classic cars. Sarah, Only headlights. On demand. Triumph TR7. Uh. <laughs> Land Rover Series 2. They ain't got pop headlights. They must still make a noise. <laughs> Next rally car. <laughs>